Our data dog trigger will tell us that there's a problem with our site. In this example, something big has happened. Then we'll get the title. Conditionally, depending on that title from Datadog, we'll check to see how our queue is doing. And then if our queue is overloaded, we'll go ahead and create another EC2 instance using this Python step. Hey everyone, Derek here. In this one, we're continuing on in some DevOps tutorials, and we'll take a look at how we can view our batch queue, and then if we have too many jobs in our batch queue, automatically deploy a new EC2 instance. Let's get started. Starting out, we don't want to check this all the time, but instead, we just want to monitor for a Datadog alert to let us know that we want to do this check. So to do that, what we need is a Datadog trigger. We can pull in that Datadog trigger, and I've already got mine set up. If you need help with this setup, I have a video link down below that should help you out. But now that we have this, let's go ahead and turn on our trigger, and then choose on for our event output. What this means is now whenever we get a response to our Datadog webhook, we should get that information provided to us as a variable down here that we can use. Depending on this Datadog event, we'll want to do different actions, and that's why we should use a conditional. We'll use a conditional step here, and we'll need to say something like, if the event title is a certain string, then we need to do that check. We'll pull out that event title by using a quick Python step. We'll do something simple in our Python code, and we have that variable called event. So we'll say event, the Python variable, will be equal to the WaveScript one. We access it by using a variables dictionary and setting it equal to the same name. Now title will just be event.get and we'll access that title. Finally, we'll write it back. So we'll say variables, title will be equal to the Python variable of title. Awesome. Now we'll close out of this Python code. Let me go ahead and send through a mock Datadog event. That way we can access and see this information. Sending through that notification, we should now have an event over here, which we do, and we see that we have title. In this example, I have something big happened, and then I mentioned the webhook that is just part of the setup for the Datadog trigger. So we have something big happened, and then we pull out that title right here with our Python code. Now in our conditional, let's say if the string something We'll make sure it's case sensitive. Something big in, and then we'll pull in title. Dropping that here, we now have this statement. If something big is in our title, then we want to perform our check on our batch queue and then create instances if we need them. To do that check on our batch queue, let's create a Python step. We'll need to put in a few functions that we can use to access our Boto3 API. Pulling those over, and all of this code will be on GitHub. I will just copy and paste our imports so we don't have to type it out. And the link for that GitHub repository will be linked down below too. Now, let's go ahead and create a client. So how Boto3 works is we'll need a client to access batch resources. And we can create that client by calling it. Pasting this function in, we see that we need two strings. We need an access key ID and a secret access key, but we shouldn't write these plainly just in raw text in our Python editor. Instead, we can use the dot secrets file over here to the left. We have that batch ID, and then we have that secret, we'll call it batch secret key. What these two values will be, will be the API access keys for a user that has access to your batch AWS resources. I have these values, so I'll just copy and paste them in here. Copying those in, what this will do is create a WayScript variable that represents this string that I passed in this value. Now that we have these down here, we'll click on view code and we can just pull these in to here. These are string types, so we don't need the quotation marks. And I'll pull this second one in as well. Awesome. So we have our function to build our batch client. And now let's go ahead and pull in some information about our queues. To do that, we'll call this function here and I'll paste this in right here. So describe queues will give us information about our queues and we can use this build client method to go ahead and get those credentials. Now that we have this, 
we can also build a function that says get pending jobs. So we'll copy this and paste it in as well. And we have all these functions to let us know what's going on in our queue. At this point, we can definitely tell if our queue is overloaded by the amount of jobs that we have in our queue. We'll want to take those queue jobs and make a comparison to our maximum jobs that we want for one instance. To do that, I'll pull in a little bit more code. I'll copy this and paste it here. So what we're doing is we want a response to get the pending jobs in our batch queue. And then if we have pending jobs, we want to create a job count with the length of those jobs. That way we can do a conditional such as if the jobs are greater than 500, then let's go ahead and create a new instance to knock those jobs out. Awesome. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and run it so we can get that pending jobs variable back. We see that for this example, I have no pending jobs, but that could change in the future. Closing out of our code view and going back to our tree. Now let's use a second conditional and we'll say if pending jobs or a job count is greater than 500, we'll apply some Python logic to create an instance. So in this example, we want to create an instance. And to do that, we can use something very similar to what we did with batch. We can use the Boto3 API and let me copy it. And as you can see, we're doing the same operation that we did above. We're just building a client. We'll call that client with the information we need and then post an action to it. In this case, we have two more keys that we need and these will just be the same thing as our batch. This time we'll say EC2 ID and then EC2 secret. Going back into our Python code, we'll go ahead and pull those in. So we have our EC2 ID, we'll drop it in and then our secret. So EC2 secret and drop that in. Now to create another instance, we'll use a function like this. Pasting that in, we're, we'll build our client and then create another instance from an image on our account. Finally, we'll just be sure to call this function. So we'll say something like print the response of our function, which needs to be like this. So now anytime that our queue backs up on AWS, we can automatically create another instance to help us get through those jobs. Very briefly going through the whole script again, our data dog trigger will tell us that there's a problem with our site. In this example, something big has happened. Then we'll get the title. Conditionally, depending on that title from Datadog, we'll check to see how our queue is doing. And then if our queue is overloaded, we'll go ahead and create another EC2 instance using this Python step. As always, if you have any questions or comments about this script, please let us know and we'll help you out. Until next time.